everybody, it's Kelly. Welcome to my channel, and today I can also say welcome to my podcast. Remember I told you I was working on something really exciting? Well, today's the day I'm going to reveal it to you. So I have combined the audio from my podcast, Decorating Tips and Tricks, along with a beautiful video montage of gorgeous images from my home and also the home of my co-host, Anita Joyce. I think you're going to really enjoy this way of listening to the podcast and also getting opportunity to get inspired and get ideas from all the beautiful images. So I will be adding additional episodes along with this beautiful video as we go along. Today, we're going to kick it off. And as we say at the conclusion of every episode of Decorating Tips and Tricks, remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. And I hope we do just that. Enjoy the episode, and if you're new to podcasts, there's going to be a slide, and it's going to tell you step-by-step step how to download our podcast, how to subscribe, and we would love to have all of you do that and do it both ways. Subscribe here on YouTube and also to the podcast. So get a cup of coffee, get a mug of tea, get a glass of wine, and enjoy. I do, and please don't. Hey everybody, it's Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 461, Decorating Do's and Don'ts. This is going to be fun. And you know what? If you're listening to us and you have not subscribed yet, subscribe to the podcast. This way we'll show up right at your door, or I should say, right in your device, whether it be your phone or your iPad or your laptop, whatever you're listening to us on. We'll show up every Wednesday. You don't have to search and you won't miss out. So let's kick off your first do. The tip is to photograph your room. Uh, there's so many times people tell me that once they photograph their room, they notice something they didn't notice before uh, but they see it in the picture but you know when you're walking around in your room your eye tends to you know if you have a, a pile of laundry in the corner of your room like if I had that in my room my brain would say don't even look at that pretend it's not there <laughs> and then I would probably forget about it until I took a picture and said well there it is so you do notice things in a picture that you might not notice in real life uh, and also it's just kind of a different way of viewing it you're a picture is a little different than seeing it in person, so you'll be able to see some things uh, from particular angles, like as, as someone's walking in, you may experience the room a little differently because maybe you say, well, I normally sit in this chair, but a guest coming in is coming from the other angle. So it's something I really uh, feel like very strongly that it will be very helpful for. It is very enlightening about your rooms when you take photos. So I suggest that you take Anita's advice and do that. And you should mix patterns. Please do. Don't just sort of color block your accessories, whether it be pillows or other items. Mix it up a little bit. You could have a large pattern, a small pattern, then maybe something like a geometric or a stripe. So have some fun with it. It, it gives a real layered sense to the room and it, each of the patterns really sort of becomes better because it's juxtaposed to something else rather than just having maybe the pillows that came with the sofa or something <laughs> like that. So I suggest that you play around with it, get swatches, learn to mix patterns well. We have some episodes on that that we could link uh, in the show notes to this show, but definitely experiment and mix up your patterns. And that's what makes the room so fun is mixing all those patterns. I love to have patterns in the room and not just solids. I think you're going to end up with a better look at the end of the day if you have those patterns in there and, and mix a few different ones in. Another thing I wanted to say, because so many of us have this ideal place that we want our house to be and we're not there yet, to really enjoy the journey, enjoy the process, and not be so focused on it perfection and this end goal. You know, you may not ever get your house to this perfect place. And it's it's okay for me to say I'm not a perfectionist and I kind of try to enjoy every phase along the way, but I know some people really are perfectionists and they feel like they cannot enjoy it until it's perfect. But, you know, that's the thing. It may never be perfect. So why not enjoy it now? Yeah, so true. That makes me twitch a little bit, but I think that it really is something that, that you should strive uh -oh. for. <laughs> so I was talking to you? <laughs> a, well, a little bit. Although your but, house is pretty perfect. 
well, you're very sweet, but I only show you some of it. You don't see what's going on behind me. Isn't that true of taking photos sometimes? You're like, what is happening behind me? The boxes are overflowing, but it looks pretty good right in front. It's not in the picture, though. Yes, just edit that out. Add a bold piece or make a bold move. Don't be afraid. Neutral's great, and we love that as a foundation. And I'm not saying you need to slather your walls with purple paint or something like that bold for you bold within your decorating vernacular or your style something that's bold could be a real focal point in the room whether it's a beautiful antique or whether it's the way that you treat your fireplace or it might be the color of the walls or it might be a wallpaper or something like that but experiment with something bold and and maybe if you're a little afraid to get bold and everything you you really went neutral hard and you're looking around you think oh my gosh that would be so scary to paint a wall or to wallpaper and it's such a big commitment try something that's just an interesting accessory maybe it's a maybe it's just even a really big vase that you put big branches in like make it a big moment and see how you like it that is completely reversible yes and those bold things these are the things guests will notice when you come in your house and these are the things that you are going to enjoy these are the things that are going to make you smile another do is if your rug is too small replace it with a larger one or if you love the rug that you have why not layer the rug like we talk about and put a larger solid colored rug underneath and do the patterned one on top. Uh, This is just a beautiful way to extend the rug and nothing messes up a room like a rug that's just too small. Yeah, 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 yeah. The bath mat. You definitely don't want the rug the size of a bath mat. A bit of asymmetry. Now, I'm a symmetrical person. I really like two things, things flanking, things that are the same. But a little bit of asymmetry which is not the opposite of symmetry. It's it's a form of symmetry, actually. And I, and I know that we have an episode that we talk a lot about that. And so if mm-hmm. we can dig that one up, we'll uh, tuck it into the show notes as well. But just a bit of asymmetry really makes a room interesting. Now, for me, I would not necessarily have asymmetry in a place like my mantle or maybe on either side of a floral arrangement on my dining room table. There, I want the symmetry. You know, I want Mm -hmm. three candlesticks on one side and three candlesticks on the other. Or, you know, on the mantle, I want two vases that match or a vignette that matches. But maybe the asymmetry comes in in easier places. Like one of your chairs maybe has a lumbar pillow and the other one has a different type of pillow or one has a throw and the other one doesn't. So just a a little bit of sort of knocking the symmetry off in the room can add a lot of interest. So you can think of a lot of different ways to do that. I just gave you a very simple example. But if you are new to this and you have everything that's a little, you know, like, like little soldiers that are lined up with each other and your house is very symmetrical, maybe try pulling something away like or if you have two chairs that are matching flanking a sofa maybe you change one of those chairs to a different type of chair or to a chaise or you take that chair away completely so you can play around with it without buying anything new and just see how it feels to you yeah I think that's a great idea and to add some asymmetry but I also like symmetry too so I don't like to do too much asymmetry but there's definitely a call for it here and there and if you have a lot of symmetry you don't want to overdo so you want to have something to kind of break it up so it doesn't feel too expected you want to have some unexpected things in the room so i think that is very helpful to have the asymmetry another thing that you can do is use large accessories and just a few of them in place of a lot of little things. You're going to end up with a so much better look. It's going to look cleaner. It's going to look less cluttered. And those larger accessories often add that wow look that you were talking about, Kelly. Whereas little things are not going to wow somebody when they walk in the room. Group your collections together. That is a definite do. I was just helping a friend stage her house for sale, and she had a lot of blue and white. And while it looked beautiful all over her house, we took 
large pieces of it. She had like large ginger jars and things like that and grouped them together on this um, like sort of break front side table in her dining room. And I think it just took the collection to a whole nother level. It was made such more of an impact on the room and really popped out. Uh, Whereas where it was scattered around, maybe one ginger jar here and a vase over there, you know, you saw it and you were getting the flow of the blue and the white all around the house. But bringing it all together was a big wow moment. So that was kind of like grouping your collection and at the same time getting your bold move in. So it was kind of like two uh, decorating Mm -hmm. dues in one shot. Well, and I agree. It's like you said, when you put it all together, it becomes one big wow rather than a lot of little ones. So there's some magic that happens when you put all of those pieces of a collection together. And the caveat would be, you might need to pare down your collection. If you have a massive collection, you might not need to be able to display all of it at one time. You might need to pull a few things back. The next do is to follow trends with inexpensive pieces like accessories and rather than following trends with big ticket items like sofas. So if you want to uh, follow the trends and enjoy something that's trendy, try it with a pillow that you can then get rid of in two years when the trend goes out. Uh, you don't want it to be a sofa, and then you're stuck with the sofa that you spent you know, a couple of thousand dollars on uh, two years later, and you don't like the trend anymore. Yeah, like the curvy, maybe crushed blue velvet sofa that looks mm-hmm. so yummy right now. Maybe mm-hmm. in a few years, that's not going to be where you want to be. I totally agree. That's a very smart and economical do. Uh, another one, sort of like maybe the flip side of that is buy one investment piece per year. Now, sure, if the budget allows, go ahead, buy some more investment pieces. But think about it in terms of you're building your decor. And you're not just talking about, you know, a vase and a a candle or something like that. The real big important pieces like the sofa, like the major pieces of furniture. Think about it like you're putting your money into something that's going to last a long time and is going to go with you no matter if you move to a different home. And if you do that just once a year, think about it. In five years, you're going to have five fantastic pieces that will be with you for many, many years to come. And if you ever wanted to resell them for something, they would they would hold their value. Mm-hmm. Well, that ties into my next do, which is invest in quality things that where you don't need constant replacing. And so you talked about buying an investment piece every year. And uh, this is just kind of adding on to that to say that these investment pieces or quality things are going to be things that in the long run, you're going to save money. And and we talked about it a few uh, episodes ago about with the sheets, that if you buy the the cheap polyester sheets that pill, you're you're only going to like them for a month or two, and then you're going to want to replace them. Whereas if you'd bought the expensive sheet, they could last years and years and years. I have some linen sheets that I've kept for years and years, and I still love them as much today as when I got them. Yes, for sure. I was trying to think of when we just recently talked about that. Yeah, it was in connection with the linen sheets. Use natural materials, linens, stone, wood, wherever you can. It's better for the environment, most likely. So you might want to check into that, into the specifics of the item. But more than likely, if you use something that's natural, it probably is better for the environment. It might be a little bit more expensive up front, but it's definitely going to last longer. And it is going to have the sense of being authentic. And having authentic things in your home is really, really important and goes a long way to enhancing your style and just making making your home feel more luxurious. You know, those natural fibers too, Kelly, they last better. They're just going to hold up to more wear and tear. And I just think that they hold up better over time. So nature really does know what it's doing. (laughs) Uh, Add a French chair for instant elegance. Well, you had to know that tip was coming. I know, of course, the French chair is coming. Well, the thing is, it adds so much elegance. There's so much beauty in French design. French chairs are so easy to come by at antique stores these days. And as we keep saying, antiques are at an all-time low price-wise. So now is the time to go get 
a French chair. Mix styles and errors. Don't get trapped in some sort of time warp. Even if it's right now, 2021, don't get stuck here. Don't get stuck in the mid-century. Please don't get stuck in the Victorian era. I didn't. I'll help you. (laughs) It's wonderful to add older pieces. Of course, you know we're going to suggest that. But mix your styles and mix your errors, and your house is going to be so much more interesting, and it's going to... I, there's a show I just heard about. Uh, it's called Frozen in Time, I think. It's on HGTV. Oh, yes. I've heard of that. And Maureen McCormick, Marsha, 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 is uh, one of the hosts. And they go into houses that are actually frozen in time. And I think they concentrate on maybe the 50s, 60s, and 70s. But you know what that look is. You don't want that to be your know house. it. I inherited one of those. <laughs> So yeah, definitely mix it up. That is very now and it will be very tomorrow. And um, so don't live in yesterday, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, but that's one of the secrets. How do you have vintage things in your home without it looking kind of frumpy and dated? You mix in modern elements. Another thing to keep in mind when you've got your accessories, especially if they're not large accessories, is to use a tray to corral them. And it kind of does the same thing that you talked about, Kelly, about putting all that blue and white together and it became one thing rather than a lot of little things. The same thing happens when you put things on a tray. It becomes one item rather than several little things. So it it just kind of has, it visually adds them all together so that they become one. And it's a beautiful look for your room. Yeah, I have done, you know, vignettes and up the wazoo for for all the years, right? Like so many vignettes. and But every time I do one that doesn't have some sort of base to it, whether it be a tray or even if you do, you know, put something up on some books or something, it just elevates the whole, literally and figuratively, the whole collection. And when I'm saying collection, if you're doing a vignette, like your three pieces, it makes it look so much better rather than sort of just like out there in the breeze. So I highly recommend using trays. Get a bunch and just have them in some closet somewhere and pull them out as you need them. They can be all sorts of looks. You could go vintage, you could go modern, and that also will really change the look of uh, the vignette. Like if you do it on some sort of lacquered tray, it's going to look a whole lot different than if you did it on an antique silver tray. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I have all kinds of trays. And some are more modern, some are more antique looking, and it's just fun to pull out a different look for a room, depending on your mood. Maximize your natural light. Now, that might seem like a big duh, but it's really important. And a lot of people aren't doing it because you have curtains or draperies on there and you just don't regularly open them or you have too much fabric going on or it's just too much coverage or the maybe the shades are not the down, up, up, down kind, which are terrific. And so you have to have them pulled pretty far up for or pretty far down to get any privacy so think about your window treatments if you have an occasion where you'll be swapping them out you maybe want to think about you know completely changing the look I love the down up up down where it comes up from the bottom as well so if you have a room that you need some privacy on that might be bordering on a street or the front of your house it's a great way to let the light in on the top but have the privacy on the bottom and oftentimes we say hey maybe you don't even need any window treatment so Mm -hmm. if you're not in need of privacy and it's a room that you know gets a really nice amount of natural light but you're not blinded by the sun and you're trying to do work or something like that it might be a room where you could just completely take the window treatments off so rethink those look around your house see what you have going on and just because it's been hanging there for 10 years doesn't mean it needs to hang there any longer so (laughs) but that's one of those things too we were talking about with the picture it doesn't even occur to you that it's there because you're so used to seeing it your brain just turns off uh, the thought of seeing it so uh yeah Now, another thing that you can do for your room is to add black, a bit of black to every room. My mother is a painter, and she always said, each painting, if you want a balanced painting, you need to have darks and lights. 
And so it's kind of a standard thought for decorators or designers to put a little bit of black in every room or put something very dark in every room. It's going to help ground the room. I so agree with that. And I didn't always do that, but once I started doing it, it really makes a big difference. And you might say, oh, well, black's not part of my palette right now. You can always work in something that's black because it, there are so many things that come in black. And I really don't mean just your TV when it's not on. Oh, maybe, oh, we're not, you know, no, that doesn't count at all. That doesn't count, right? So maybe, you know, a black a pleather or leather poof or ottoman or something something it can be something small it could be a frame it, but get it in there and let us know because i think that you're going to find that it really makes a difference in the room yeah if you can't come up with something just buy some old black books black bound book, books would be great but that's right. hard to say <laughs> that is hard to say or spray painting something that you have that you know really doesn't need to be mm-hmm. whatever color it is and make it black add a mirror to every room Oh, I think that makes such a tremendous difference. And especially in rooms that are naturally light challenged, a mirror will make a big difference. Hang the mirror in sort of unusual places. Sometimes it's something that's unexpected, maybe um, you know, even above a doorway or somehow just work it into the room. It doesn't have to be a major focal point. It doesn't have to be the mirror above the mantle. Think about little places that you can tuck in a mirror and it's doesn't have to be a large mirror either and it could be one with antique glass so it doesn't necessarily look like a vanity mirror there are so many beautiful mirrors out there and so many different price points so I suggest that you have put one in every single room and if you have a room that's a little bit darker and doesn't get the natural light like a north facing room or something maybe try to put the mirror opposite whatever window you have in there so it's reflecting what's going on outside and bouncing the light around three sources of light in every room crucial you really want to have three different sources of light so that would be something overhead if it's just uh, can lights or um, overhead lights make sure they're on dimmers but maybe you have a chandelier or maybe you have a flush mount or something like that if you have something overhead and then table lamps some task lighting, maybe just a little night light tucked into a bookcase or something like that. Or as we say in the kitchen counter, tuck in a lamp someplace. So try to get three sources of light in each room. I mean, you could walk through your rooms right now and have a look and see if you have that. And if you don't, super easy to try it out. Grab a lamp from another room and just bring it in and see if it makes any difference. I bet that you will find that you really... uh, I mean, warm up to the room even a little bit more. And then the room just feels better to you if you've got some softer additional lighting bouncing around in the room. That's right. And if you don't have any tables where you can put lamps, you can do a floor lamp or do a wall sconce. And you can do the yeah. ones with the cords or the ones where you have a, a, an electrician come and it's built into the wall. Hate to be such a downer well, and negative, but there are <laughs> don'ts. Okay, so my first don't is don't place all of your tall furniture or big pieces just in one corner or one side of your room. So you want balance in the room. So you want your heights varying uh, so that there's, again, if you have two tall pieces, make sure they're kind of spaced out in your room. Uh, and uh, if you have large pieces of furniture and small, you want those mixed out, mixed in the room as well, because you don't want it to feel like if it were a ship, it would be tilting to one side. Exactly. The the word Titanic was running through my brain while mm-hmm. you were saying that. Like, we're lilting to the side with all the heavy furniture. Yeah, definitely don't want to do that. And sort of on a similar note, don't have all matching sets of furniture. Mm. No, no, no. Matchy matchy's gone, gone, gone. We don't want that anymore. So if you have some things that match, well, you know, that's okay. Maybe you move them to another room or you break it up with something else. You know, add in something completely different, like a painted piece or maybe something that's made of rattan or wicker. Just break it up. Just don't have all the same types of furniture that all look like they match in one room, like a bedroom set or something like that. Right. You want that collected look where it doesn't look like you went out and bought everything the same day. See, there's no way to make that a do. You can't say do have a matching set. (laughs) Do mix things up. Do mix things up. Okay. Okay. So on to my next don't. My next don't is don't have a cool gray on the wall. This is something that we see a lot and people say, my, I wanted a gray, but my room feels too cold. And that's what happened is the person chose a blue gray or a cool gray. 
So if you want to have gray on your walls, but you want it to feel warm and inviting, you want to go more with a grige, more with a gray brown, or let me say it a different way, a warm gray. So like, for example, the one that I is my favorite is Agreeable Gray uh, from Sherwin-Williams. But there are others out there as well. Oh, yeah. I think that this tip or this don't comes way back in your history when your dad came home with that. <laughs> What'd you call it? You know, fill-in station gray? It Serv- like service station gray. Service you know, station gray. Yeah, Yeah. everything in our house uh, was painted with that service station gray because he <laughs> had an extra half cal- gallon of paint. <laughs> you need it painted? Here's the paint. You <laughs> Might as well use it. Don't be too cute and too precious. It's not a good look. It's not sophisticated. You can have maybe something, maybe for a holiday, but I would stare away from... Uh, too cute, too sweet, uh, a little more sophisticated. Now, what are you talking about? Now, be a little more well, specific. it's kind of like the, when the Supreme Court judge way back when said about pornography, you know it when you <laughs> see it. Well, it's kind of that way for me. Like, I know it when I see it. You know, like, mm, okay, one, the extreme end is like a collection of precious moments. Ah, I can't believe oh, I just oh, even okay. said that. Oh, there okay. you go. Well, you just okay, that's like, whoa. Okay, don't even go there. But you know kind of when something's like too cutesy. Are you talking about like now Hummels or is that? Well, kind of, <laughs> you know, okay. but but I'm talking more things that, you know, you see in the aisle at TJ Maxx or Home Goods. And you're like, that's so cute. You know, I love mm-hmm. that. Yeah, if you feel like it's too cute, maybe don't get it for your house. I wanted all everyone's house to have this sense of luxury and sophistication mm-hmm. and not that it has to be all high end and high brow and all very serious, but I think in, you know, you know how I feel about the word signs and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That I'm, with, I'm with you. I'm with so you. So that's kind of what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. And you know, don't get mad at me if you have those things. Cause I still love you. Mm-hmm. I just think that maybe you could do without. Mm-hmm. There you go. Don't hang your curtains too low. So even though your window may be down a foot from the crown molding, put that curtain up as high as you can under the crown molding. It's okay if there's a gap between the rod and the window. It's going to look so much better, and it's going to make the window feel like it's taller and bigger. And don't keep your furniture against the wall like Mm. it's in a bank heist or something and it's being held (laughs) hostage. Let your furniture come off the wall. Let it mingle with the other furniture. Uh, Sure. Some things, you know, if you have a smaller room, you're going to want to have close. But you don't even have to have something smack against the wall. You can have it sort of close. I just got, and I should use this as a crush, but I'll tell you guys now. I got the most darling slim eight inch wide console table like sofa console table with a mirrored top and gold legs from Target Mm, I think it was just over a hundred dollars with the shipping it's fantastic I put it behind my sofa in the living room and if if anyone's been listening to us for a while or know me from my blog or my YouTube, you know I have a very long, narrow, challenging living room to decorate. But I wanted to pull that sofa off the wall a little bit. Uh, so it, it does that. It also, because it's mirrored, it's bouncing some light from the window. And mm-hmm. it's a great place to put a teacup or a wine glass when you're sitting there. Great idea. Thank Can't wait you. to see a picture of it. Well, I'll have to show you. So don't add too much stuff to a room and it's so tempting to do and I think when someone's got a room and something's not right the knee-jerk reaction is add more add more add more until it's right well if something's off it's probably not that it's missing something but something else so you really need to analyze it and figure out why the room is off before you just add a piece of furniture because a lot of times that's not the problem and those empty spaces help the room visually breathe. So you need those empty spaces. So it's best not to overcrowd the room. Don't forget the ceiling. Look up. Think about it. You might want a treatment on there, or like maybe some beadboard or some beams, or you might want to just paint it a different color, or you might want to put wallpaper on it. It doesn't have to happen. 
and it certainly probably shouldn't happen in every single room. That might be a little much, but maybe that's just the pop. Maybe again, that's marrying a do and a don't. That's being bold and not forgetting the ceiling all in one fell swoop. Because you can really make a statement up there. And I think it's the fifth wall that's often forgotten. Yes, good point. Don't use small artwork on a large wall. If you've got a large wall, you want large artwork. If you have a small wall, you can use small artwork, but it needs to be sized appropriately. Or it's kind of like what we talked about with the rug. The rug, it's going to look cheap if your rug is too small for the space. And it's going to look cheap and skimpy if your artwork is too small for the wall. Don't use boob lights. (laughs) That's all I'm going to say. Nobody has to elaborate on that one. If you don't know what a boob light is, look up. (laughs) See if you have one. It kind of looks like uh, what it's called. Uh, Body part. Don't use vertical blinds. And I'm not going to comment more on that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and don't have boob lights and a vertical blind in the same room. That's too much. Okay. Don't have rooms you don't use. Don't, don't. Is that a double negative? No. Don't have rooms that you don't use. I don't think that's a double negative. No, it's not. No, you got it. I think Because that it's bad mojo. It's bad karma. It's not great for your house to have rooms that nobody's in. If it's a guest room and you have guests often... Well, it's being used, but if you have a guest room and maybe somebody comes once a year or so, maybe tuck a little desk in there, Mm -hmm. or maybe if you're a napper, God bless the nappers, I am not a napper. If there is a place to have a nap, maybe you snuggle in there, or, you know, maybe you have a window seat and you could go read a book in there or something. Use the rooms. Use all the rooms in your house. Yes, of course. I love that idea. Don't let all of the cords show in an unattractive way. So if you have a table that has some legs, use some duct tape or some other things that you can buy on Amazon to hide those cords behind the legs or trail them on along, along the top of the table and then down a leg. There are ways to disguise all these cords, so there's really no excuse for having them all in a cluttered mess. Yeah. I mean, do you ever, you look at blogs, you look at magazines, you're like, how is that light on? It's magical. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes it's Photoshop. Yeah. Oh, it could be Photoshop. <laughs> That's a real trick, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how to do that. So I have to use duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> well, it saves you a lot of time Photoshopping if you just I did it bet. that way. I bet. I bet. Don't let the aesthetics of the design overpower the function and use of the room. If you've been listening to me here for a while, you know that I think that function really should drive the design. At least initially, that's where I like to start when designing a room. So don't let it just be so perfect or, you know, it has to be just so to adhere to the design that you're striving for. And therefore, you know, in doing that, the room doesn't function well or it's not inviting or, and, and nobody can get in there. Maybe, you know, there's, maybe there is too much furniture, like Anita's saying, don't have too much furniture. You know, maybe it's just too, too stiff. Maybe there's just something going on where the room isn't functioning as it should. So Really think about function first and don't let that go by the wayside to get a certain look. Mm -hmm. Don't paint a wall without testing the paint color in a smaller area. You could do the uh, paints. What are those paint things that you buy? Sample eyes. Sample eyes. You can Mm -hmm. buy sample eyes, which will give basically a little piece of repositionable wallpaper that's the color of that paint that you can try. Or you can buy a board and paint the board. but I highly recommend that you do this. It's a little extra work, but these mistakes can be a real disaster if you buy the paint without testing it first. Don't think of your decor as finished. It's always evolving. You don't want to, uh, my room is finished. And then 10 years later, it looks exactly like it did the day I declared I was finished. And that's that. Sometimes that happens to people. I've had friends say, oh, wow, I put stuff in that bookcase 10 years ago and I never moved it again. Don't let that happen to you. It's fun. If you're listening to this podcast, you love decorating and you love creating a beautiful home. So chances are you're moving stuff around a lot. But if there's something in your space that really needs some freshening, have a look. But just as far as what 
is you know the thought process in your mind like people are always asking me specifically when we were you know, really working hard in the house and the construction was going on they were like are you done oh. are you finished is it finished well no i'm never going to be finished I, I you know i'm working on like the second round already <laughs> yeah but hopefully the workmen are out of the way that's the yeah thing. i mean yes you know someday you're hopefully you know but you don't want to be constantly tearing walls down and you know tiling and that's not really what i'm talking about i'm talking about just don't think about it like okay boom i put that vignette together and i'm done well i wanted to talk about this for a second because i think it is definitely a mindset because when I first started decorating, I thought you decorate, you move things around till you find the perfect setup, then you leave it until you move on to some new design. But what I didn't realize is it really is good to be constantly moving it because you might find something you like better, but also you're going to get bored with it that way. I mean, and that's, there's so much to love about moving things around. You're not going to get bored. You may find something that you really love that you hadn't even tried before. And you're going to be learning. Every time you move things around, you're going to learn what works and what doesn't work. And so it's just a wonderful school that you can have of interior design in your own house. Yeah, so I agreed. And think about it like, you know, your person, yourself, or your wardrobe. You didn't graduate from college or finish whatever training you may have done and said, okay, I'm done as a person. I'm completely done. I will never revisit anything and just this is how I am. No. And your wardrobe, you know, what you were wearing 10 years ago, you're probably not wearing today. So your home should evolve. You should have that same mindset. Like i think I'm a lifelong learner, right? So every day mm -hmm. you're hoping to learn something new or try something new. Well, you, you know, try those same things with your house. Okay. Don't buy side tables that are scaled too small for the chair or for the sofa that they're next to. So be sure that they are properly sized because sometimes I see a really chunky chair and there's a skinny little glass table next to it and they just are not working. They're not, they don't look like they go together. So definitely think about sizing when you're buying a side table to go to a go with a chair or a sofa. Don't buy anything deliberately distressed. Embrace <laughs> the wear and tear for sure and the patina of age. But I think those days are long gone. We got really excited about sort of man-made instant distressing, whether it be in kitchen cabinets. That was a real move towards that for a while. Uh, or just even individual pieces of furniture, or even little accessories. You know, maybe just go find an antique that got beat around a little bit if you really like that look, which I do love that look. It feels a little too contrived when it's purposefully distressed. Well, I'd like to add a caveat that if you do it well, I think it's fine. But a lot of times, uh, if it's just kind of slapped together and it's just been scratched with some steel wool and then you slap some wax on i i don't think that's it's going to look like you did it on purpose but you know when you use a lot of those products like amy howard has i think you can do it and it, it can really look like a real antique so i think it just depends on you know how much you put into it we hope you enjoyed the do's and the don'ts again take it for what it's worth if you really want to do a do and don't want to do a don't or whatever or the vice versa we love whatever you do <laughs> So enjoy. Enjoy your home. That's really the whole premise of this entire show. That's right. Just kind of giving you some tips. Again, it's just it's just fun and kind of learning. And it may be that sometimes we say something you don't agree with. That's fine. Just skip that part and go on to the part that, that you do agree with. But really don't have a boob light. Okay, what's oh, the hot topic? Okay. The hot topic is a House Beautiful article, and it's called This Gorgeous $899,000 Condo Listed on Zillow Has a Bathroom Without Walls. Did you see the pictures? Well, yes. Of course I had to look at the pictures when you oh, sent that to me. Oh, my goodness. I was just so glad the picture didn't include a person in there. Well, I'm just going to say this. A bathroom without walls, not going to touch it with a 10-foot toilet brush. <laughs> But it's just dumb. I mean, it's just, just one stomach problem away from divorce. I mean, it's dumb. Come on. It's really dumb. Yeah, I, I don't know why they did that. I just, no. No, no, no. And apparently they aren't alone. There are other places like that from what the article said, right? 
Uh, well, I guess I I just I'm still just I'm just stunned that that, that anyone would do that. So yeah. I just can't imagine other places do that. But I, I just I don't get it. Yeah, no, don't that's... do that. That's one of our don'ts. Don't have a bathroom with no walls. <laughs> yeah. What's your crush? Oh, well, this is a new company that I have not had any experience with before. Have you heard of Zazzle? I feel like I have. Okay, because I feel like I'm the last person to hear about them. So I have my recipes that I keep uh, in a digital format, and then I print them out. These are any recipe that I've tried that I really like. Mm -hmm. I have collected, and it's basically my own personal cookbook. Mm -hmm. So I have a binder that I keep all of these recipes in because I have a hard copy all the time. But the nice thing, too, is because they're in Dropbox, I can pull them up on my phone no matter where I go if I'm traveling. But I put so much work into this cookbook. It represents lots of love, and it represents all these recipes that I've made and all this research I've done. I feel like it deserves a nice binder. And I had a pretty decent-looking binder, but I wanted a custom-made binder that said Joyce Family Recipes that had a beautiful binder. And so I found Zazzle will let you completely customize your binder cover. And they're really nice. I'm very happy with it. And they use the D rings, which is nice for your paper. And uh, it was a very wonderful experience. And I, I highly recommend them. And I will link to the particular design that I ordered. Okay. So they make a binder and then you printed out your pages and put them inside. Right. But what they do, they're kind of a personalized company. You can order binders, you can order business cards, you can order luggage tags, and okay. they will custom do it with your your image and then your text. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds So good. yeah, the binder is just the binder. You would put whatever you want inside it. And then like note, you know, like a, a, a journal, if you wanted to give someone a journal that's customized, personalized with their name on it, I think that would be such a great idea. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. What's yours? It's a book. It's a book actually that I listened to, but I think that if you were reading it, it would be just as delightful. It's called The Last Garden in England, and it's a tale of five women living across three different times whose lives are all connected by one garden. And I really enjoyed it. If you listen to books, whether on Audible or something else... I really loved the narration. There were, I believe there were five different people. They definitely sounded like at least five different women uh, reading the book. It is, it spans, I think, from 1907-ish in, up until 2021, like into July, so into the future even. I thought it was fantastic. And I think everybody who listens to DTT might really enjoy it. So The Last Garden in England. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Well, I hope you enjoyed the episode. You're definitely going to want to subscribe to Decorating Tips and Tricks in the podcast version. And it's so easy to do it. It's also fabulous and fun and free. I'll have instructions below in the description of how you can start listening to our podcast. It's really easy and we'd love to have you along with us. Thanks for watching today and have a wonderful rest of your day.